All right, friends, let's do some kitchen chemistry. For this part of the project, we are going to be making our rocket foil. But before I get started, this is the picture of the commercial solar rocket engine. And by looking at the diagram of the horizontal cross section of it, I was able to determine the primary causes of my past failure. Now, the reason I'm drawing your attention to it is I observed many folks making holes which run through all the grades. Now, this could work if you're relying on electronic means for deployment, but it's hardly possible if no electronic system is installed because your time delay grid rapidly compromises followed by a premature injection. Perhaps the most important observation from the commercial rocket model is the hole. It didn't go all the way through. It's actually a hybrid of the two propeller and grain configuration, the core and the end burning propeller. Below is the thrust curve of the commercial solar rocket engine when it's ignited. It starts with a core burning propeller then transition to end burning. This animation represents a core burning propeller and grain configuration, which I observe most people seem to be going for. The regression starts inside out and its thrust curve is often associated with a steep slope, which then falls. And this final one represents the end burning propellant grain configuration. The propellant fill up part of the volume from the front and bond from the back. End burning propellant, also cigarette burning, has a thrust curve that quickly rises up and plot through for some time and comes down. Now if you recall the combination of this thrust curve and that of the core burning was the one I had when I ran the solar rocket engine software in my last video. The distinction between the two propellant grain configuration will determine how the rocket motor is going to behave. The main rule for this is engine thrust at any given moment is proportional to the amount of foil that's been born and not proportional to the area of the foil that's undergoing combustion at that moment. Now let's get busy with the making of the foil. So we'll need 65 grams of potassium nitrate or stub remover or saltpeter, 25 grams of table sugar, 30 milliliters of water, and 13 grams of corn syrup. But because I'm using icing sugar which has stuck in it, it makes corn syrup not needed. To increase the bond rate, you can add rust, iron oxide, but I wouldn't do that for a reason that I will explain later. Now, if this is your first time trying to make your own foil, consider starting with a limited quantity until you are confident enough and in no way must you use open flame to make your foil. Now, there are different ways of setting up a sugar propellant, but the most frequent one is the heating method. Dry compress was my first attempt. It is quick and easy and often associated with not so serious experimenters. In fact, all my past failures were directly connected to this method. All what you do is mix your fuel and oxidize it together, fill and compress it in a motor, and you have a rocket engine that may or may not work. And the second one being the dry heated. In this method, KNO3 is ground or melt to fine powder. It should then be thoroughly mixed with powdered sugar. The mixture does not melt both the KNO3 and sugar. Potassium nitrate melts at 631 degrees. Dry heating actually melts the sugar, and then with a lot of stirring, it coats the KNO3 grains with the melted sugar. The finer the KNO3 is ground, the more intimate contact the sugar will have with the KNO3, and the better the propellant will be. Now, if you happen to have any excess after casting, you cannot reuse it by the same method. It will ignite on the stove. That was my first accident. The final one being dissolved and heated method, which is the one I'll be showing you here. The dust takes longer compared to the two, with the optimal default ratio of 65 grams KO3 and 35 grams sugar. You need 30 milliliters of water in the preheated pan. I found the 30 milliliters to be less because the heated pan will vaporize the quantity so you go up high and go up to compensate for the loss. You can add the KO3 and sugar mix all at once or one at a time. The mixture is brought to a boil and the water quickly evaporates off. First, it falls like boiling water, the most of the water is driven off. It starts bubbling and spitting, and stops and it just hisses a little. Finally, it turns to a mass potato consistency. The mixture should be stirred a lot after the first boiling stage. The more it is stirred, the faster it comes to a temperature and reaches completion. The temperature first stays around 212 degrees centigrade until most of the water escapes. Once it 
Once it gets to the heat state where the last of the water is given off, the temperature starts to rise and you are getting close. Once it gets to around 350 degrees centigrade, it's very per cash. In contrast to the dry heated method which both the canola did very close with the sugar, the dissolved and heated method actually dissolve both ingredients which get mixed intimately together. When the water is primed up, the two states intimate contact and as they cool, they both recrystallize together providing a better mixture. But why the segmented grains? How about filling the entire cylinder with the propeller and add a little hole to start the ignition? This could work if the grain is short, but if the grain is too tall and for some weird reason during transportation, vibration can cause cracks in part of the propeller. This will result in oscillation in the thrust during operation, because when combustor reaches any crack, motor pressure would increase beyond desired limit and it will blow up. Adding glycerin in place of corn syrup can solve this problem. So it is a good reason to have segmented grains and load them all as a single unit. something that looks like the commercial solid rocket engine only the first grade should have it not too deep a hole through it and then the rest would be without any that's what I did here and I'm using a plier to remove the iron rod through it in this test demonstration the propellant appears to leave almost nothing behind after the combustion this is an indication of a proper made sugar propellant so until next time stay safe